Hi, I'm Laura Douglas, president of Bristol Community College, and I have the great pleasure of honoring you and welcoming you here today at the National Offshore Wind Institute, otherwise known as the NAWI. So I want you to imagine that this building will become a world-class training center that prepares workers for challenging and dynamic environments an essential link to support the offshore wind industry covering a wide variety of needs, safety, technical skills, and so much more. In front of me will be the training, the practical training section with a deep water training pool for sea survival and crew transfer, simulating real world environments mixed with theory and classroom work. Delegates will learn through practical experiences such as scaling a turbine, uh, learning how to transport equipment, and even rescuing colleagues while hanging from harnesses. Bristol's NAWI has partnered with Maersk Training to provide a one-stop shop for its workforce certifications and customized programs, including Global Wind Organization or GWO training, such as basic safety, blade repair, technical skills in mechanical, hydraulics, and electrical areas, and other required and needed programs. The offshore wind industry is poised to create thousands of job opportunities across a wide range of industries, and it is critical to develop a local workforce and infrastructure to support the industry. The NAWI will provide a critical part of the offshore wind sector's infrastructure and Bristol's associate degree program in wind technology and its certificate program in offshore wind power technician, we are going to help to ensure Massachusetts will be competitive and support this industry in its supply chain to grow right here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're grateful this, that for the support that we have today and that we have received from all of you to secure our region's future. I would like to recognize our leaders who have taken the time out of their busy schedules to be with us today and to tour this great new facility and to be a part of a very exciting announcement. Our visionary leaders of the Board of Trustees and Foundation who are passionate about the mission of the college and great supporters of economic development for the region. And they are Chair of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, Joan Medeiros. <laughs> Trustee, Stephen Torres. President of the Bristol Community College Foundation, Thomas Murray. Former trustee and current foundation member, Tony Sapienza. Our very distinguished guests, Senator Edward Markey, Congressman Bill Keating, Congressman Jake Auchincloss, and Representative Antonio Cabral, Representative Christopher Hendricks, Mayor John Mitchell, representatives from Vineyard Wind and Mayflower Wind, and representatives of the New Bedford City Council. I would now like to invite Mayor Mitchell to welcome you to the city of New Bedford, and uh, I will take leave of the podium <laughs> Thank you. to let you do your wonderful welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, everybody. So first off, let me just say, it's nice to have a, a normal press conference with people not wearing masks, and, and um, that's worth celebrating. So let's have a hand for normalcy. Um, so I, I just um, I, I, I want to express my gratitude um, for uh, the work of, of Bristol. And, and, and taking the lead, really asserting itself um, and pushing this project forward, uh, which 
uh, as I mentioned in our um, gaggle over there, uh, is, is really uh, based on analogs in Europe and, and uh, onshore wind analogs in the Midwest. It's really, uh, they, they're taking the best of, of institutes from around the world and making it happen here in New Bedford. And so I really want to thank you, Laura, for your leadership and, and that of, of Jen and the entire team and the board, of course, uh, in that way. Let me offer a word of, of context. So as we see it here in New Bedford, we, as we step back and think about what, like, what's the importance of, of an institute like that, it's, it's this. Uh, in the winner-take-all economy of the last 20 years, the spoils have gone to major metro areas. Uh, as, uh, as a city that is not part of a major metro, as a city that is, uh, and as a metro area here of some roughly 200,000 people, um, we're a place that has to compete on its own, and we choose to do that. Uh, we do it by leveraging uh, what we do well, and here it's, frankly, it's what we do at sea. This is America's largest commercial fishing port. It is the largest, we have the largest cluster of seafood processing uh, in the United States, uh, right where you are amid um, that concentration right here. This was once a fish house itself. Um, and uh, we have been working very hard over uh, the last few years to leverage assets like geographic proximity to the natural resource, which works for fishing and will work for wind, um, uh, the, the right infrastructure, which we continue to plan and build and build and build, uh, and it's the best seafaring workforce in America. These are the things that we do well, and we're doubling down on, on all of it, and that's the role that uh, this institute will play. It will leverage what we do well and, and make us do it even better so that we can attract investment, so that we can grow jobs, so that we can create opportunity uh, for families in New Bedford and greater New Bedford and, and, and far beyond. Um, and it's creating institutions like this uh, that have staying power that will allow us to sustain it for not just this generation but the next one. And that's why it's important. It's, and so here we are at a moment where um, you know, we've got to put together the funding, of course, that's a big part of the equation. Um, and and you know, we've had tremendous support from our state delegation and our federal delegation to help uh, figure out how to make that happen. Those conversations will continue, uh, of course, and as, as time goes on when, in the context of things like infrastructure bills and other things. Uh, but it's all a way of, of creating opportunity for everybody right, regardless of background. Uh, equity is important here in New Bedford. We, we are situated uh, in a part of the waterfront that's in close proximity to very diverse neighborhoods, and we want to make sure that uh, the opportunity emanates outward from, from here uh, evenly to everybody. And, um, and I, I know that's something that Bristol is, is steadfastly committed to, and uh, you know, we are uh, prepared to work uh, hand in hand uh, with them along the way, as well as the, the work of our congressional delegation. Senator Mark, I will say, uh, has been a proponent of uh, helping us leverage what we do well um, here on the waterfront. We're uh, about 100 yards away from a, from a project that he was instrumental in helping fund that will create more opportunity, the North Terminal Extension, which is just right over there. Uh, Congressman Keating, uh, as, well, as well as Congressman Auchincloss, both of whom have been all over uh, the idea that New Bedford, um, as, as we profess, can be the best at all of these things. And that's what we're all trying to do together. So I really want to thank all of you for your support uh, along the way. And, um, and I want to call up Senator Markey for, um, uh, to say a few words about um, his work on wind, which has been instrumental, which has been loud at the, at the federal level. Uh, and it's been very authoritative and credible because he's, he's delved into the details. He recognizes that, uh, that the promotion of the offshore wind industry is not only good for the environment and a, will be a pillar of the, the United States efforts to combat climate change, but it's a way of creating opportunity for everybody. So Senator, we thank you and ask you to come on up and say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you so much. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your um, leadership on this issue. Uh, thank you, Madam President, um, and thanks to uh, Bristol Community College's uh, National Offshore Wind Institute for being this uh, incubator, this, um, this beginning of 
an era of job creation, massive job creation uh, that has to, of course, have the kind of training that you're going to be providing here. Uh, so we thank you uh, for your warm welcome to us. Uh, and it's great to be joined uh, by Congressman Bill Keening and uh, Congressman Jake Auchincloss, by, uh, by you, Mr. Mayor, by uh, uh, Tony Cabral, Chris Hendricks, thank you uh, for your leadership here and up in the State House, ensuring that this ecosystem gets the support which it needs uh, so that New Bedford is uh, a center for the United States uh, in this burgeoning industry. Uh, thank you to the representatives from uh, Vineyard Wind and from uh, Mayflower Wind for being here, and to Joan and Stephen and Thomas and Tony, thank you all so much for all uh, the work that you do here at Bristol uh, Community College to uh, make sure that this institution serves uh, this community on uh, a daily, weekly, yearly basis. So it's an honor to be here today in New Bedford, a community on the front lines of our clean energy revolution. When Herman Melville wrote Moby Dick by the light of a whale oil lamp. Massachusetts was the nation's leading power producer. Once again, New Bedford's shores will launch the world's energy revolution, this time with clean, renewable wind energy. Uh, and we anticipate by next week, perhaps, some exciting announcements around vineyard wind uh, and the future of the US offshore wind industry, promising good paying jobs, for the South Coast and for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and ensuring that labor unions will lead the wind energy revolution. We must wean ourselves off of fossil fuel addiction once and for all. In Washington, we're continuing to debate infrastructure, and let me be clear, climate action is infrastructure. Renewable energy is infrastructure. Wind energy is infrastructure. The Republican Party seems content to continue their climate denialism, no matter how many storms damage our country, how many people die from what used to be once in a generation heat, or how many wildfires rage across the West. The GOP used to stand for Grand Old Party. Now it stands for Gas and Oil Party. And we're about to have a confrontation over the next uh, months uh, with those industries over the future of our country and the needed infrastructure that we have to build. And I refuse to allow uh, the GOP, the Gas and Oil Party, to have us mired in a 1950s-like debate when we should be talking about the 21st century and the future and the role that New Bedford and all of Massachusetts can play in this incredible revolution. When we limit our ambition, we dim the glow of possibilities for our future, which is why we must go big and bold in our response to this climate crisis. World-class education and training will power our future. And that's why I am so pleased to be here at Bristol Community College's National Offshore Wind Institute. This institute is the future, an evolving and powerful force here on the South Coast. For more than 50 years, Bristol has been educating students, building our workforce, and training leaders on the South Coast. It is here that students are going to get the education they need, the training they need, not just for a job, but for a career in wind and renewable energy resources. And that is what this upcoming generation wants, careers in renewable energy technologies and in helping to solve the climate crisis. And at least a few of the leaders here today are Bristol alums, including uh, Representative Tony Cabral and uh, Bristol Vice President Jen Menard. And I also uh, want to congratulate a Bristol alum, leader in training, and an intern from my own office, uh, Samantha 
uh, Resendez, who is here today as well. Thank you, Samantha, for helping us in our office to work on these issues. Through the development of this remarkable facility and a comprehensive wind energy training curriculum, Bristol County Community College is continuing these decades of educational ex excellence. In partnership with wind energy industry stakeholders, Bristol's National Offshore Wind Institute will open career pathways for local students, provide advanced training for those in the field, and help employers build and sustain their workforce. Like Bristol's impact here in New Bedford, our institutions of higher education and unions across the nation will play a leading role in our wind energy revolution by training the minds who will build, connect, and maintain our wind energy infrastructure. That's why I'm planning to reintroduce the Offshore Wind Jobs and Opportunity Act. And that legislation would address the workforce needs of the offshore wind industry and provide grants to support the training of new and incumbent workers. First, that bill would direct the federal government to engage with stakeholders such as labor organizations, companies, institutions of higher education, and state and local governments to identify workforce gaps in the offshore wind industry. After we understand the biggest workforce needs, this bill would create a grant program that can best support offshore wind worker training programs, just like the one established here at Bristol Community College. The Offshore Wind Jobs and Opportunity Act would be invaluable to efforts like the one we celebrate today as our institutions work to train the thousands of workers needed to meet President Biden's goal of deploying 30,000 megawatts of offshore wind in our country by the year 2030. It begins here in New Bedford. It begins here in Massachusetts. That's who we are. The offshore wind workforce will power our electric grid, charge up our local communities, jumpstart our clean and climate safe economy. So we thank you so much again to Bristol Community College. Uh, we know the commitment that you have to diversity. We know the commitment you have to equity. We know that you want to ensure that there is a full participation of all communities of color in this incredible job creation revolution that is taking place and being led from here. And we appreciate the incredible leadership which are showing on these issues. And we have to make sure that all of the funding which we provide from the federal government as well is tied to that goal of inclusivity. We can save all of creation by engaging in massive job creation by engaging in union job creation, but we have to make sure that every community is included. So let me stop there and, uh, uh, and thank all of you, uh, and, um, and to thank my partners, uh, not just uh, uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this day, uh, but in the legislation which we're working on down in Washington. Uh, we were successful in December of adding a 30% tax break for the offshore wind industry for the next five years. And we were able to get that passed in December of 2020. That was not on the scoreboard uh, in Jan on December 1st of, of, uh, of 2020. But that 30% tax break is sending a powerful message to every wind uh, company in the world that the United States and the Bedford and Massachusetts are the place to go. And so we're going to work to extend that tax break uh, to make it even longer uh, in the deliberations which are about to unfold over the next five weeks down in Washington. And in partnership with that almost guaranteed incentive to build, we're going to need training. And that's why we're here. And that's why uh, my great partner, uh, Bill Keating, uh, is, um, uh, is uh, here, uh, a great leader on this issue, partnering with uh, Congressman Auchincloss as well, uh, so that we get the legislation passed that makes it possible for New Bedford to be this great leader. I give you my great partner and friend, Bill Keating.
Well, thank you, Senator, and uh, welcome all. Uh, Madam President uh, and your board, uh, congratulations on the work you're doing here. Uh, it's, it's really a game changer. Mayor Mitchell, uh, who's been steadfast and relentless in his support uh, of offshore wind. Uh, it's a day I think we'll look back on today where uh, New Bedford is noted for so many different things, uh, regionally, nationally, will also uh, be uh, well known internationally uh, as a center for the work we're doing here. And that'll be New Bedford, Fall River, our South Coast, uh, and the region beyond will all be parts with that. <coughs> uh, Senator Markey, who uh, I would say is the Paul Revere in Congress, uh, who's for th over three decades uh, spreading the warning to all of us of the existential threat of climate change and the environment, and is truly looked upon uh, as the environmental uh, member of the Senate. He was in the Congress and uh, continues that work uh, and it, with great passion, as we all know. <laughs> so thank you for what you're doing. You know, I, I'm thinking back, uh, I've been working on these issues for over a decade. It's been a primary area of a concern. And, and today brings forth so many aspects of what my focus has been on that. Uh, and it's a, a focus that deals with the international side and how important that is to get us going here. Um, a few years ago, I was in Europe and we had a meeting you know, while we were there at a conference with the CEOs, the biggest CEOs, the biggest companies in Europe. And a lot of them uh, that were attracted to, to go to that meeting uh, were countries that wanted to invest, companies rather that wanted to invest in wind. And so at the course of the meeting, I asked them, I said, what is, would be the greatest incentive we could do to provide greater investment and get this industry going in the United States to a far greater extent? Uh, is it the tax structure? Uh, is it the regulations? Uh, is it the uncertainty in getting capital because of Cape Wind and other things that came before where that uncertainty unfortunately hurt investment? And to a person, they said, well, those things are important, but that's not the reason we're not investing more uh, in the United States and in offshore wind. And I said, what is that reason? He said, it's, it's clearly you need an educated, trained workforce. That's what you have to have. And then we'll invest in the money and the growth will come. You don't have that now. But that's what we're here today talking about. Not talking theoretically, but actually doing it and starting it uh, going forward. So that's the importance of what we're talking about today. Uh, it couldn't be more critical if we're going to succeed in this country. Now, what does that mean in terms of jobs? Well, uh, it's been forecast with the Biden administration and others that in just a little over eight years, it's not a long time frame since uh, we haven't even begun uh, the actual breaking of the ground yet, uh, there'll be 44,000 direct jobs uh, from the offshore wind industry in our country, just in that time frame where this is just beginning to take off. And there'll be 33,000 estimated uh, community-based jobs that go with those jobs. And what does it mean in terms of uh, dealing with our energy need? They're forecasting just in a little over eight years again, over 10 million homes can be totally funded for their energy needs with these projects. That's that's enormous. What does that translate to? 78 million metric tons uh, of CO2 rejection. So it's amazing on all fronts, just in this next few years to come forward, the impact this is going to have. And those jobs, and I think we'll have an announcement or some things forecast just in the next few days, uh, will be great jobs, uh, good paying jobs, uh, career jobs, uh, jobs with a great future, and union jobs. And we're going to see that take place. And we're going to make sure we do everything we can do here with the help of mayor, councilors, legislators uh, that are here, uh, that have been great supporters uh, of offshore wind, and all the way from the terminal uh, forward, investing and, and supporting what's happening down here. Uh, we're going to be in a position where we move this forward, uh, and, and we're going to see this be the real center uh, of where we're going. 
So as we go forward from today, uh, we've had discussions, and uh, the mayor and I many times have said, we keep telling them it's coming pretty soon, they'll believe us. <laughs> well, it's here. Uh, and this core ingredient is here. Uh, and New Bedford is a terrific place, Fall River, uh, and then the educational institutions that Bristol is partnering with, all the way from their plans for uh, having high schools to four-year colleges be part of a continuum, depending where people want to go. And people will have that chance. These aren't jobs that uh, have a short shelf life. These are career jobs. These are jobs that will be ongoing. These are jobs that need constant retraining for safety and professional purposes. And this institute here is going to be uh, the epicenter of that in our region. You'll be you're breaking new ground here. Uh, the other parts of the country will be looking at what happens here, what, what you've done, what the successes are. And indeed, that European partnership is there with your training, with Merck's, uh, uh, you know, as part of the training at Denmark uh, Institute. So it's there. Uh, and at the end of this month, I'll be having a hearing uh, that I chair uh, dealing with uh, global environment and global energy issues uh, in Europe as part of the base of that committee. And we're going to be bringing in uh, Europe Wind and, and the leaders from American Wind to that hearing, as well as uh, Vineyard and Wind. Uh, we, Mayflower will come for another hearing, I guess. Uh, but we're going to do those things, and it marks the reality of us going forward. Um, we're partners, uh, Senator Markey, represent Auckland Class myself, in trying to provide the resources to help build this. Uh, and now, with a real uh, foundation being laid here, uh, you're going to make our job easier, I think, although there's nothing easy in this Congress. <laughs> but we're all working together uh, to try and get uh, funding for training, uh, for construction. It, it, doesn't, it may not be all in one package because that's hard to navigate through our system, but we're going to be persistent in dealing with it. Uh, and I have a great partner in the House uh, who's joined us this term, who has uh, made this one of his priorities. Well, one of our first discussions we had was on this issue. Uh, he's joined with me in the complementary legislation on the House side that Senator Markey talked about uh, in terms of offshore wind, uh, something we advanced last year. Uh, and we hope to advance in both branches this year and get done. Uh, so there's resources for, more resources for the educational training. And he's been someone that understands the significance in so many ways to our region in giving uh, people, not just young people, but people going through uh, life change retraining because of job displacement, uh, people from all communities, uh, all backgrounds, uh, gender, race, just making sure that we have a good, solid diversification here uh, to give people their chance at the American dream. So I'm reminded uh, of the movie Field of Dreams when I look at today and what we're doing and what the, these uh, CEOs in Europe told me we had to do in the US to be successful. Uh, we're building it. We're building that foundation with this plan. And the quote that we all know from that movie is this, build it and they will come. Well, the, the capital investment will come, the, the local jobs will come, and a cleaner environment will come. Uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague. Uh, we share Fall River together. We share our priorities in this together. And someone who really, uh, trust me, made this one of his biggest priorities uh, in his uh, uh, first congressional year, Representative Jake Auchincloss. I appreciate the, the warm introduction from my friend and colleague, uh, Representative Keating, and from the leadership that Senator Markey, the, the Paul Revere of climate, I like that, has demonstrated for decades, uh, as well as Mayor Mitchell and President Douglas. Uh, I, as we were doing this tour and we were hearing about the curriculum and the training, and as, as I was visualizing the pool there and looking at the photograph of the water safety training, I was getting some tingles down my spine, thinking back to my time in amphibious reconnaissance in the Marine Corps. That's an entirely water-based training regimen in the Marines. I spent six months going to the pool every day doing controlled drownings. I used to have nightmares about it every morning. I tell you, it's more fun to walk through it as a member of Congress than it's going to be to do it as a, as a delegate. 
Uh, but to run these kinds of programs, these programs that have the highest standards for safety and technical training in the water, you need highly professional instructors and a highly trusted institution, and that's what Bristol Community College and the National Offshore Wind Institute are going to be able to provide. They are really the nucleus of this industry because they're going to provide the training and the certification that allows industries to invest with confidence. It's tremendously exciting uh, to, to see here and to visualize with them what will be here very shortly. Uh, I want to take a moment here to recognize somebody who I think has had a really profound impact on this for, for decades now, and that's Jen Menard, a VP at Bristol Community College. Back when George W. Bush was president, Jen was raising her hand and saying, southeastern Massachusetts can and should be the center of the offshore wind revolution in the United States, and really I want to recognize her leadership in doing that. And I know everybody here has been a part of this. Uh, Jen, I'm not sure you get enough credit for what you've done for this, so thank you. This is going to be a generational investment and a generational hub in clean energy and an economic development for southeastern Massachusetts. And I, along with, with my partners in federal, state, and local government, as well as in education and nonprofit, am committed to continuing to provide the financial support, of course, but also the political support to make this, uh, to make this a hub in Massachusetts going forward for a clean energy revolution. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank our congressional delegation for coming together uh, during their recess at a very uh, a time when they want to be with family and friends uh, and making time out of a very busy schedule to come here to New Bedford. I also want to thank our, our wonderful mayor, John Mitchell, uh, our board of trustees represented today by Joan and Steve, and our wonderful foundation represented today by Tom and Tony. Thank you so much. And uh, this concludes our formal program, but if you'd like to stay around and ask some questions, we'll be here for a little bit. And uh, for those of you who are still not convinced, offshore wind is real. It is very, very real. And today really kicks off uh, a great adventure as we build uh, a wonderful industry here in southeastern Massachusetts. So thank you everyone for coming and I hope to see you again right here at the National Offshore Wind Institute or the NAWI. There you go, the NAWI. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>